Yeah, it actually <laughs> there it is. We're live. How did you do? How did you do the balloons? I didn't do that. I thought you did. Jennifer did them. I did not. <gasps> I didn't do the. Really? <laughs> I didn't. Can I send that them from your control control booth? Hmm. Huh. Was yeah, I didn't do it. I, I have no balloons on here. <laughs> you have the master control. Yeah. Jennifer just. Yeah, but. I like it. If you can give each one of us girls something, I'll take the balloons, give Marsha the hearts, give Jen Let the fire. balloons on here. Yeah, I don't have any balloons. Hey, it's my first time, so <laughs> I guess I better roll with it. We'll but see uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show everybody the opening because I didn't have it on live when I thought I did. So I'm going to show it again while you guys are here. Hold on. All right, there we go. You know, it was a little hard to get on. Maybe that's why we're a little slow. That could be that. it. Yeah, because it, it told me that I had to go on Google Chrome, and I was on Google Chrome. Oh. And so then it asked me to download it again, and I downloaded it, and then it clicked on. But, yeah. I I'll just went right on. You did? <laughs> yeah. But, yes. I used it, but I have used it before for, like, auditions yes. and stuff. Yes. So yeah. maybe I've ha already done all of that stuff. Do you like doing your own auditions at home or would you prefer going to a casting office? You know what I liked? I liked doing them in the city because my husband is a, a, a television producer yeah. So yeah. When I, and he used to be an actor. So when I had to do a tape, I would go to his office and use his amazing camera. Yeah. And I had a good, so, and those were great. My ones from home, I haven't gotten anything. So I think they're bad. <laughs> trying to follow the directions, and you're trying to do all the cut cuts it's that they want. You don't have notes and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I hated it. I just like, ugh. Yeah. I miss. I miss walking into a room, especially if it's a comedy. I miss yeah. walking into a room where all the writers are laughing at their own jokes and stuff. Yeah, it's so much fun, and to meet everybody and the, for them to yeah. see your real personality. One time, I was down in mm. like probably like the Bray or something doing an interview. And I'm carrying this stuff and I'm walking through and splat on the ground in front of all of them. And um, all my stuff went everywhere. And, and I'm like, oh, oops, sorry, sorry. And I gather up all my stuff and I call my agent. I go, oh, my gosh, you wouldn't believe what happened. It was horrible. I dropped all my stuff. I landed on my face. And da -da -da -da. he goes, they loved you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my God, I looked like the biggest idiot. And it, <laughs> it made me stand out. And it, it was like, right. You know, it was just one of those weird flukes. I was dying. <laughs> and I was afraid to tell him what I'd done, too. You're so young when we started. We were so young and, you know, terrified of everything. I, at least yeah. I was. And I was, too. Same. Hey, Marsha, look over uh, Beverly's left shoulder there. Right. Oh. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, Yeah. I'm oh. lucky. Right. Can you see him? It's Tarman. Oh, my God. Is it a statue? Yeah, it's just the head. The, James Shaver, who's on Facebook, you're, I'm sure you're friends with him, all of you. He made that. I'll give, I'm, trying, I'm trying to block all of the disasters that I have going on in my home right now. So I put him yeah. now that I've hey, got that. I'm he looks him. good. Yeah, right? He's groovy. <laughs> <laughs> he's groovy. <laughs> he's really groovy. I want to see the face of him. Oh, he's looking at yeah. Is he a mask or a... Uh, it looks like actually a uh, head. Beverly, is he a mask or a sculpted? Oh, he's like a, oh he's wow, a, that looks good. He's a mask. Oh, he's a mask. He, yeah, wow. but he, you can't get your head into it. You know, it's too. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I could do it, but I'd have to cut him down here and do it. But it'd be a great he's Halloween. Wonderful. Yeah, Oops, yeah, he's fabulous. That's great. Looks you know, like Brian Chapone is trying to put the Bigfoot head on. <laughs> right. Crazy. <laughs> and they can you imagine how it must be so hot in there? Oh yeah. yeah. yeah well remember it was like wasn't it like 90 degrees when we shot that first yeah, day you so were hot. there? Even even at midnight when we were finishing up, it was hot. Oh, All right. Yeah. My, my, my dog is crying for water. She only Oh no, no, you're good, Mark. 
bottle. Oh. Little Pixie, Pixie yes. Bell. Pixie Bell. <laughs> I'll yeah. be right back. Yeah, of course. Yes. Where's Daddy? <laughs> Eat her water. She has a Pixie Bell and I have a Fitty Bell. You got a Aww. He has yeah. another dog too. And Jen has dogs too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's in my face. <laughs> Jen, but you have one dog, or do you have a? Because I know you you do a lovely walking thing to give your yeah, puppies play fun. Give him play dates, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can get paid while doing play dates. And I've seen and you. You've walking, me. You're walking several dogs. Yes. Yeah. That's so cool. I love it. I love uh, it. He specializes. I, he specializes in behavioral issue dogs. The so dogs that nobody else wants to take care of because they have some kind of behavioral issue. Somehow. Yeah. Rocco is really good at teaching other dogs how to be good dogs. He's oh my really, gosh. Like I'm getting teary eyed talking about it because he's so neat and it really helps the other dogs and it helps the family as well. It takes yeah. stress off of the family, you know? I know it's like a weird thing, but I'm so passionate about it. Because when your dog is not social, it's very stressful. If your dog won't socialize with people or other dogs, it can just be so upsetting to everybody. So yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, I mean, we live in Surf City, USA. So my dog like lives in a town where literally there's, you know, dog menu on every in every restaurant. There's, you know, he's allowed to go everywhere. So I've just built my world around my dark dog. We all do, right? We all do. <laughs> I got into Marsha's car, and this I didn't notice this. But hey, this, in this, this is Tiffany Doran, guys. She interviewed oh. me for. Uh, Hi, uh, Tiffany. Welcome to the party. Hello, <laughs> Miss Tiffany. But, yeah, they um, interviewed me last week for about the Bigfoot movie. Oh, great! Yeah, great. Well, I can got she in come in, or can we only have four on a screen? She's just watching, I think. Oh, oh no, she's she she just comment. <laughs> yeah. I'm having, um, a glass, I'm having a glass of wine. Wine. I'm what I call a girls weekend. <laughs> I'm having what I call a girls weekend. What is it? What's in that? Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Seltzer <laughs> and a splash of juice. <laughs> in, in Pittsburgh, we had the best time. We sat outside the hotel for hours. <laughs> and she was like, Remember? It was freezing. Yes. We were all bundled up. It was the best time. And she's our, a bourbon girl. And I think yeah. I was doing vodka and soda. And then when we I go out with Glenn, we do margaritas. But Mar but Glenn does not drink at all. But he yeah. lets us girls do the margaritas. Oh, good. Uh, I'm your guys' uh, designated driver, so you got to uh -huh. And Paula, she's a professional drinker, so. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Wait. <laughs> now my pretty bell's fussy. Come here, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> the dogs. I haven't had a drink in almost six years. <gasps> Yeah, wow. good for you. That is good. Hello. Hey, look at that. Oh, I, I never. I always hear about oh my god, she's cute. <laughs> so anyway, uh, well, Beverly is back. We'll start doing some quick Q and A here. You guys ready? Yeah, finally. I know you can't get a word in, can you, Glenn? Oh no, it's okay. It's entertainment. Hey, uh, we'll start with Beverly and Marcia, then we'll come right around the horn there. So, uh, first question is, what age did you guys start acting? That's a, that's a good question. I have a twin sister. And so my sister and I started when we were babies, like a couple of weeks old, we got spotted quickly for um, Shenandoah the movie with uh, Jimmy Stewart. And so my sister and I were in that. And then it went on as we were little being used in, you know, different things. And um, so I started very young. And But then we left. My mom, we started dancing on the Tabletops a little too much, and my mom said, "Okay, that you know, we're gonna stop this for a while." And then my whole family is in the film business, and I'd go over to Warner Brothers and see my mom. She's working on 1941, and you know, Jim Belushi was there, and it's just, it just was so exciting and and so enticing that I, I wanted to get back into it. So I, I at 17, I started right back up again on my own, and uh, so yeah, baby, then 17, jump, jump. <laughs> but it seems like Beverly, you were spared like the child actor. Yes, because I didn't have that mom. Yeah, she wasn't right. a, a a stage mom at all. She, yep, done there. Oh, and Bewitched. We were next in line to do Bewitched after the lovely girl that did get it. And oh, uh, Tabitha. Uh, what's to play Tabitha? Tabitha. Yeah. Tabitha. 
to be Tabitha because we were twins. But the I think her name is Erin. I can't remember. Um, but she got the part over us. So that's the way it goes. Some, you know, yeah. we had Captain Crunch commercials and uh, it, it, they have game shows on. It's, it takes two. We did that, you know, game show. We did um, well, all kinds of stuff. It was it was cool. So you, you didn't learn how to scream until you did Return of the Living Dead? Well, I was crying as a baby all the time, but no. Oh, <laughs> I don't know which one's worse. <laughs> no, yeah, the crying was then, yeah, because it was mostly right before that. I just had done, I think, a couple of commercials and soap opera parts, little soap opera parts, and I never had to cry on any of those. It was always, you know, the teenage girl who's coming in, and I had to moon walk one time, and um, <laughs> I learned it really fast. I was like, I got, I got to do the moonwalk. I got to get this part, you know. <laughs> so it was fun, lots of fun. How about you, Marcia? So I, I mean, I grew up like from the age of maybe eight, eight years old, I was like, people would say, what do you want to be? And I said, I wanted to be an actress. Um, so I grew up like doing plays in middle school and high school. And then I just went to college for like a year. And then I moved to LA and I got married very young to my first husband and his family owned a theater in Glendale. So I was doing a lot of plays there. And then uh, I think I got my first professional uh, I did a commercial when I was like 20 and then I got Living Dead. I think it was maybe my sixth or seventh audition in LA and I got Living Dead and I was 21 years old. I lied to them. I told them I was 19. Good girl. Imagine lying about your age at 21. Like you have to lie about your age at 21. Yeah. Um, you had to. I did. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's when I really started like professional acting. Hey guys, I don't know where your names went. <laughs> yeah, our names left, didn't they? See, yeah. the balloons were not me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. I haven't touched anything other than checking the comments. Let's see, maybe it's that. How about you, Jen? How old were you when you got started? Yeah, Jen. Well, let's <laughs> see. Um, when I was born, my mom didn't have enough room in her womb. Let's start from the beginning. And so I was born with my legs a little rolled in. My brother was born with like this, but mine were a little rolled in. So the doctor said at like two and a half to put me in dance classes. Ballet would help correct that. So my mom put me in ballet at two and a half. Then I started doing beauty pageants. And then when all the little girls were being all nice in their things, I was blowing kisses and going up to the guy with the camera and singing, you are my sunshine. And <laughs> so my mom got approached by this agent and my mom was like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And um, the lady literally followed us home. We were lived two hours away. Oh, wow. And she followed us home. And my mom was, you know, kind of scared. And at that point, I thought you lived in the TV. So I was like, yes, yes, I want to live in the TV. Um, <laughs> and, you know, my mom was like, do you want to do it? And I was like, yes. And so my mom was like, OK, you know, so we went and we met with the lady. So I started modeling when I was two and a half. Um, I did like the CNC box. You know, you pull a little string, it goes around, the cow goes, move, you know, like things like that. And then. Um, when I was like six years old, I told my mom, I'm like, I want to do like real acting, you know? And my mom was like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe go take a class first. Maybe go take a class first. So I took a commercial workshop and I booked the very first audition I ever auditioned for. It was a national, it was a Chrysler commercial. And my mom was like, oh no, you know, I was like, yes. And my mom was like, so it begins. And then um, at 10 years old, I was like, I, now I really want to do acting. I want to do some movies. And so my mom was like, okay. And, um, I ended up getting the very first thing I auditioned for, which was Friday the 13th part seven. Wow. Like, oh, this is easy. But then I got older, things got weird. Um, uh, conversations between directors and producers and management and things got weird with me. Um, yeah. I walked away from conversations like mm -hmm. we just talking about weird sex stuff. And um, yeah. Yeah. now on hindsight, I think they were figuring out where to put me, where, who I could work with and who to keep me away from and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to be a kid. 
So I took tried to take off four years for high school. And then I, I made the mistake of doing a school play. And I invited, it was the Crucible. And I played out well. And Whoa. Yeah. And I invited my old acting manager out to see it. And I got off stage. I'm going to cry, like, even just thinking about it. And I was just like, I I, I got to come back. Like, I just, I couldn't. Like, in that moment, I was like, this is a part of, like, my essence, my being, my soul, like, who I am. Yeah. Yeah. So it went in slowly. Very, my mom was. But every 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 step of the way, my mom was like, I don't, I don't, you know, <laughs> "It was the opposite of a stage mom." <laughs> yeah. When I went, when I went, like, cause I the first time I saw any kind of weird Hollywood stuff, you know, like girls rubbing on that, you know, grown men's penises and stuff. I ran out to my mom and I was like, <laughs> "This is what's happening in there. I don't want to do." My mom was like, "Do you want to leave? Let's go. Let's go." And I was like, "No." I don't want to leave. I just, I don't want to do that. My mom was like, and you never will. And you never have to. And my mom was very protective. So when I said, I don't want to do this, we left. When I, you know, said, I am wanting to take some time off. I took time off. Like my mom was, I mean, she was a stage mom and pushing me and I had to rehearse a lot and I had to practice things. And my, my neighbors knew my dance routines probably best, better than I did. Cause she put the steam speakers in the, you know, out to the street and I'd have to perform and perform, you know, so like she was hard on me, but like very, very protective. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, kind of follow up to this question is uh, like Beverly, we'll start with you again. Okay. Who did you go up against for the part of Tina and, and uh, return living dead? There were a lot of girls. There was a lot because I remember we even did screen tests and we could see the, the girls that were coming and going. So I don't know offhand anyone famous, but yeah. there was a, a lot of girls that were up for the role. Who'd you go up against to get the part in my movie? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Thank you, she's a star. <laughs> Before you go on with that, I, I have to yeah. say, Jen talking about the um, television, you thought you could live in the television. When I was little, uh, well, Jen won't know this probably, but Marsha might. Do you remember um, Romper Room? Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I remember she'd have that little thing and she'd go, who do yes. I see? And yeah, she would and say, thought, tell it like yes. happy birthday to so and so. Yes, I see so and so. Yeah, right. and I always thought that they could see us. And I used to always say to my, can they see us? Are they watching us? You know, and the people talking about <laughs> wow. so interesting that you said that about that. But anyway, go go on. Now Marsha's turn. Marsha, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I don't know who was up for my part, but I do know that for the final callback, it was between Christmas and New Year's. And I had flown to Ohio to see my family and they're like, there's a final callback. So I literally had to try to find a flight and get back to LA for that final callback. And I was paired up with Dana Ashbrook, who ended up being in the movie and Michael Kenworthy, who was the kid. There were two kids that they put with Dana and I. And I do remember Ken Wiederhorn was like, which kid do you like better? Yeah. And I said, well, I like this kid. I like this one. Because he seems to be listening and all of that, and so um, that's that's all I really remember. I don't remember other actresses that were up for it, but there are probably a ton. I mean, I just couldn't even believe that it was happening. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I was like, "This is incredible." Yeah. At that time, I, I I said this many times. At that time, you either wanted to be on a soap opera, like a, or yeah. a horror movie. It was those were like gold when you were a teenager. At that mm -hmm. time, when we were, I mean, Marsha's, I'm sure younger than I am. But um, at that time, it was like a big deal. And, and you know, you don't it believe was. that now, but it, it was. Yeah. It was. How yeah. How about you, Jen? Pardon? How about you? <laughs> um, for Friday the 13th, I was up against Erica Flores, who was the little girl on, do you remember the TV show, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was up against her and her and I like, so I, I auditioned for Friday the 13th and then I auditioned for a movie called Elvis and Me. And then her and I were both a neck and neck on that. I got Friday the 13th, she got Elvis and Me and I wasn't sure if I was happy or sad or if it was fair or what. How my, old mom, my, mom, my mom raised me when I went to auditions to pray that the person that needs it the most gets it. Oh, 
because you never know what people are going through and maybe they might not you know have done a great as great of an audition but it'll impact their life more than it will like yours so like mm -hmm. You know, we always did this. Thank you, Father, for my health every day and every way. I'm getting better. Thank you, Father, for my wealth every day and every way. I'm getting better. And then we do. We, we, you know, we're getting better. And she always had me sent in, like, good intentions to, like, everybody that I'll do. Like, I have a really good one. Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like it. Yeah, but I did want Elvis in me, too. Really <laughs> Of course. Yeah, so bad. Not at all. Yeah. Now, Okay, so yeah. this next question is, uh, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, who's better and who and all that, but like when you guys uh, work with other directors like me, Beverly knows I just give her the reins and I let her do what she wants to do with that character. Yeah, I don't really yeah. tell her how to do this. I just tell her what I want in the scene. So yeah. uh, I, I think that's the best way because actors don't feel intimidated coming on the set like, oh, my God, I hope you don't let me, you know, he wants me to do this, do that. I'm like, I train yeah. for this. Yeah. So, you know, so... Uh, Anybody like that, Beverly, on any of your movies? Yeah, that um, yeah, on Return, actually, Dan was a micromanager. Yeah, he, um, uh, Dan O'Bannon, he micromanaged. I want you to walk here this many steps. You know, I want you to fall this way. I want you to say it this way. It, it, yeah, very much like that. But, you, you know, it's his movie. <laughs> oh, that's exactly it. That's so, what I'm saying, yeah. But everybody else, um, anything else I ever did was really cool. That was the only time everything else had went really easily. It's like, I, I, I did a um, live show. I forget what, cap, uh, under one roof. I think it was called. And that was cool because the director would just talk to you through a microphone and say, Hey, can you, you know, and that was fun. That was really cool. And they were very laid back then. So it was, well, it was I can tell you, uh, I could tell you a time when we was filming searching and you want, I said, Beverly, you're ready. And you're like, hold on a second. She had turned around and seen where she has to cry. Yeah. And she turned around and actually I, it, it's, in the, it's in the trailer. So I'll be playing the trailer a little bit where you're actually doing it right after that. Okay. And she turned around and she did that. And I was like, oh my God, that's Oscar moment. I mean, it gave me chills. That's, it was crazy. Thank it, you. you remember that, Beverly? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just needed a minute to, there's so much going on, you know, and I said, okay, just a minute, let me go clear my head here and yeah. get ready to be sad, scared, yeah. terrified. Yeah. How about you, Marcia? Uh, I, I feel like, really honestly, so many of the directors I've worked with are uh, film directors and even stage directors. They, they do trust, like, the actor's process. Mm -hmm. And then what you hope in a director is that then they can guide you and fine tune you and, and help you, you know what I mean? So I, I feel like they, most of them that I've worked with have been very um, open to see what you bring. Well, and see, then, I, they, I, then they just fine tune it. I uh, tell my actors, I think Beverly, even Jennifer might remember, but I always say, don't worry word for word in the script. Just yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, some people do like in television, in television, yeah. very often you can't mess well, with Well, if you try to go word for word, it's almost like you're a robot. Uh, you know, you're like, it don't sound natural. So yeah. it makes it easier for you to say, man, I hope I didn't miss a word. <laughs> so, you know? Yeah, but, no, yeah. No, yeah. I think I think there are things, if there's something's super well written and it's, it's about um, rhythms and timing and comedy especially, then if it's well written, it works. And yeah. you know, if you mess up a word, you're like, that doesn't work. Yes, yeah. it works in the timing. But there are other things like I work with Ed Burns a lot, and he's like, I don't know, just you know, he's like, just do what you do, just say what you do. Like he he and he's a very good writer. And often you say exactly what's on the page, but if you don't, you know, he doesn't care about that. Nice. Yeah. There's Jennifer, she's just waiting. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> I detest it when a director wants me to say something. Okay, so let me let me start over. So I have a lot of respect and I really like working with directors that have an idea of this character's motivation, their background. They've really done their homework as a director. But when they're so stuck that their way is the highway, it drives me nuts. There's a scene in front. That's what we should have taken a clip of. We, we'll get better at this. Um, there is a scene where I scream for my dad. And they kept saying, telling me to go, 
Daddy! And I'm like, nobody says things like that. Daddy! See, we could play the clip right now. Daddy! And I was livid for like two weeks because of that stupid, Daddy! <laughs> God, I've also had directors that I've worked with that, you know, were trying to get me, and I'm like, can we, can we go talk on the side? Mm-hmm. And we'll go back and forth and I'll discuss why this is not in the script, but this is the this backstory that I have created for her. And so when you're seeing this, this is why you're seeing this. And more often than not, they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah. try it that way. And I love being able to do that back and forth or, oh, oh, I see why that doesn't work. Okay, okay, let's try it your way. I like a director that wants to work with you as well, but don't tell me, daddy, no. (laughs) That's Um, funny. And I got to give kudos to Jennifer because when she came in November of 22, when we was doing In the Shadows, remember out here in the cold, freezing weather, Jennifer? She she was doing two movies at that time. She's doing In the Shadows and The Searching. So she had to keep changing from FBI to a cop. FBI. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, she did really good. And uh, I, I have to confess, yeah, I, I um did a movie. Um, it, it was Eric Roberts' wife, and I forgot the name of the movie. That's terrible. And um, in the in the bed, I'm looking at a, a magazine, and um, the director goes, Beverly, you've got your notes in that magazine. And I said, I or my lines, you know, I said, no, they're coupons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it was so funny. I just able to, you know, keep going because yeah. it was one of those in a low budget things where we had to work so many hours and there was so much dialogue, and so I didn't want to screw up. So I did have them on little cards stuck to my stuck in the magazine while I was laying in the bed, you know, reading the magazine. <laughs> they're coupons. Uh, I hated that time. Coupons. <laughs> he believed me. No, they're coupons. <laughs> Okay, you're, here's another question. Uh, Beverly, again, we'll start with you. Yeah, that way we okay. keep it simple. Uh, in Return of the Living Dead, what was the most difficult scene that you had to do? Oh, well, there was two. Um, the first one was um, running and falling face down into the mud because we had to do, it was so cold and they were hosing us down and making us wet and then the rain was falling on us and um, we had to keep doing that over and over and over and over and over again horrible horrible scene horrible night at, at, finally the last time the last take um and i do think dan was enjoying making me fall in the mud so he had me do it more than, <laughs> truly and um I, I, you can see the last one i think they took is like i'm i can show you my hands i'm doing this and i'm laying in the mud i couldn't get up anymore and that's when you see miguel and uh brian pick me up under the arms and like drag me up <laughs> that was really hard and then the falling down the stairs because they had they had replaced the step with a um, a fake step. I was a little apprehensive about running it up because run up, run up, claw at the stairs, claw at the stairs, and um, you then you're gonna go through. And I'm thinking, ah, okay. And so um, he knew I was apprehensive. So the first take, he took the step out and put a fake one in. Where today he'd be in so much trouble for doing it. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I was. I was. I was. Um, my hip hurt. I was black and blue from my hip to my ankle. It was terrible. Oh, wow. And um, so that was really not, you know, and the whole, you saw the whole crew, once it was over and I fell through the whole crew just went, Oh, you know, like <laughs> I can't believe you did that to her, you know, cause he didn't tell anybody. Goes, let's just run this one. Let's okay. Let's run camera. You know, let's keep going. And um, sure enough, <laughs> that was bad. It was no fun. Why do you think he did that Beverly? Because I was, he wanted to, I guess he wanted that first take and he wanted me to to just be super real real and to not feel apprehensive about, you know, going, he says, that's a fake. It's, it's, you know, it's it's the real step. We're just going to run it through a few times. So, but here's the other part. It's like, I went through and then he didn't even use my take. He used the, the um, stunt girl. And I was like, what? I was so mad after all of that because she, she fell and she was holding on and she was swinging her leg, swinging her leg for a long time and then fell through. So she had this whole different take where I just went kerplunk, you know, I'd like. Yeah, because you didn't expect it. Yeah. And I just, boom. Wow. I, I don't think that they were going to tr- take the chance of me going and doing, going through yeah. again. So, 
Um, but yeah, what a, that was rough. That was no fun. All right, Marcia. Oh, on Return of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead 2. I don't know what was so hard, but I feel like the, the hardest part of it was it was f like we were filming in Southern California, which you think is warm, but it was in January, February, and we were filming up like Lake Piru and like in the desert, and it was freezing. Oh. And, and you know, you're on night shoots for like half of the shoot. So like for four and a half weeks, you're on total night shoots. And the characters aren't wearing any coats or anything because you've run out of the house. And it just was really, really cold. And it snowed. And, you know, so I just, it, you get into such a, it's almost like being a vampire. You, it, 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 it's, and it's kind of wonderful when you can just immerse yourself in that world. I mean, I kind of loved it, but I do remember that it was just freezing, freezing cold all the time. Oh. And one time I, they had like these heaters that you could stand by. And one time my coat like caught on fire. And I was like, the coat that you'd put on, you know. So, um, but as far as a hard scene to film, I don't know. I mean, we had we had some stunts that went awry. Like, there's a scene where we're breaking out of the garage and in, in uh, Doc Mandel's car, and the stuntman actually, the zombie stuntman, fell on the car and shattered the windshield. And we're in the front seat. You know, like, <laughs> everyone was fine, but you know, things like that. I remember the stunt guy got hurt. You know, I, I would say more of the stunt stuff was probably more difficult, but I felt so bad for a lot of the extras too, because they're literally lying, the zombie extras at the end where they kill everybody in the power plant. They're lying in the cold, wet, like you said, they're wet wetting them down. And I'm like, these poor people, <laughs> like, wow. you know, but they, I think they liked being there. I don't know. That was like Linnea. She had to be naked. Remember? I know. I can't even imagine. It must oh have been gosh. crazy. Running yeah. through that graveyard. <laughs> yeah, running around naked. And all the yeah, and she had that paint on, so they couldn't cover her up very well. So mm -hmm. it was it was bad. Bless her heart. That was, yeah. All right, she was Jen. amazing, though. Yeah. Anything difficult on your set? of uh, Whatever one you want. I do Friday 13th. So, um... Friday the 13th, half of it was shot in LA in a warehouse, and the other half was shot in um, Birmingham, Alabama. Wow. And yeah, and when we got to Birmingham, it had snowed the night before. There were icicles hanging from the buildings. Um, the resort that we were supposed to stay at wasn't ready. So we ended up, it, it was freezing cold. The the shoot was set in summertime, right? So <laughs> right. we're all in like little half tops and stuff. And uh, of course, we're like on the water as well. So they put us up the first night. They put us up in this. When I say motel, I mean motel, you guys. I mean, like there was no heat. There was no nothing. My mom is freaking out. I'm 10 years old. It's my very first film. It's the first time being on location. She's questioning her decisions. Maybe I should have stopped at commercials. You know, <laughs> my mom was just always afraid that it was going to be too much, you know? Yeah. And so she's like, you've got to get some sleep. You work tomorrow. You've got to get some sleep. And it was so cold. We're just, you know, like this. And so my mom's like, there's got to be a space heater or something. I do not try this at home, ladies and gentlemen. Do not try this at home. We slept in the bed with the space heater under the covers. <laughs> it was oh, that freaking wow. We could have died. Oh, we died. You should call your agent. Hey, you know how we're, we're surviving right now? So, so that was the other thing. So, you know, then the next day they have me in this, in this like creek or whatever. And the day before they had an alligator wrestler come out and get this alligator out. There was moccasin snakes. They had divers with full diving gear that didn't want to jump in the water because of the snakes. That's your job, dude. I'm 10 years old. Like they could see the tow line, so they cut it. I was drifting downstream. Like it was just so much. They were, oh, you know, working me past the hours I was supposed to be working. My mom's freaking out. She's asking me at 10 years old. I remember the like, look up here, like, when do I call SAG? Like, you know, right. like, now. Wow. My mom yeah. was afraid, like, will you never work? Will she never work again if I if I, you know, call about these things? It was a rough, it was Kane Hodder saved my life, saved the freaking day. The freaking, um, the divers wouldn't get in. Kane found like literally like a piece of wood and a stick. 
okay, chopped all the piece of wood, came and got me out of the boat. <laughs> wow. Wow. You win. <laughs> you do win. Especially because yeah, you were 10. Yeah. And you don't yeah. know any better then. I mean, that's the sad, isn't that the saddest thing that I your mom's was, like, it's I like, it fall, was scarier for my mom. Yeah, that? it was scarier for my mom than it was for me. Like, I was just like, you know, I'm drifting downstream and I'm I'm having fun with it. I'm all, bye, mom. Goodbye forever. I'll never see you again. You know, and they're laughing hysterically and they're like, you know, well, what would you have done if an alligator jumped in? I'm like, well, the scream would have been real. And then it was just kind of like a joke the rest of, you know, the filming shoot. Wow. That, like, oh, in the creek. That's scary. Yeah. Alligators are scary. Yeah. There was I just saw on, uh, okay, here I go, that's terrible. Instagram, this guy wakes up, he's camping. You, you see this? He's camping on the side of a, a river or a lake and he wakes up because his tent is getting bumped and looks out the door, alligators all around him. Ooh. And he's and he can't, he can't get out anything. It was horrible. I was like, oh my, I, I wish I could the rest of the story. It's just like, it was oh, yeah. terrible, terrible, terrible. Jennifer, uh, the part in, uh uh chainsaw massacre that sledge looked like you really enjoyed that in the clip of it the, the, the sledge, sledge, the sledge yeah, so that, that was oh wait which one are you talking you're talking about when i when i kill the guy yeah when sledgehammer hits the guy upside down yeah so i'm like bummed they cool. cut out the i don't know why but i have this crazy itch guy sorry <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just so itchy right there i don't know um so originally you know like i was i had killing scenes in that movie and it got rated x three times because of my role i don't i don't know it was like two years before it's time like people just weren't ready for a kid to be killing and then two years later they were i don't know <laughs> i don't know i read some article that some lady wrote and it wasn't even that long ago it was like 10 years ago like you know like way after the movie and everything people are still pissed off because the way i played the character they're like she had no soul she had no empathy she had no well she's leatherface's daughter you stupid fuck yeah <laughs> exactly oh so yeah i was really excited because originally that was the beginning of my killing and then in the next one leatherface was supposed to die in mine kate hodge lives in the original ending she sees a, a police car She's all excited. She thinks she's getting out. I pop up with my doll, Sally, who in the next one, Sally was supposed to wear the leather face and mask, not me. Sally, <laughs> Sally, Sally was going to keep, you know, taking responsibility for her actions. And <laughs> it was one of the best scenes I've ever seen anybody do in horror ever. Um, Kate Hodge, man, when, she, when I pop up out of the thing, man, she was laughing and crying hysterically both at the same time just full of fear and relief and i remember like i was like 12 at that time just like just from the back seat of that police car like wow, yeah, wow. <laughs> so powerful. and then you know they just canned all of that you know oh, yeah. because it, they want they had to get an r rating to get oh, it yeah. the theaters so they had to cut out, they had to rechange the ending, cut out all my killing parts. So now you just see like my hand, you don't see me fighting to like get the kills and. Wow. Yeah. You know, the, the thing is like you talked about, you know, Leatherface's relative or whatever. I get people all the time. You believe in Bigfoot, blah, blah, blah. I said, it's a movie. I said, it's King Kong, Godzilla, are they real? <laughs> I mean, come on, think about it. I have that. nightmares about them, I have to tell you. Oh, you do? Godzilla or Bigfoot? Uh, King Kong and Godzilla. <laughs> Not Bigfoot. Okay, because we could let Brian come over and see you one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I think they need to re-edit Jen's movie and now put those kill scenes in, like, for you. Wouldn't that be so great? Jen, so oh, is it going to be, like, an X rating? Like, like... So it's, it's really unfortunate because I ended up meeting a guy who was a crazy fan of mine and I didn't understand it. I was like 24 at the time. Yeah. And my friend was like, you have to meet this guy. He like is your biggest fan. And I, I end up going to his house and it turns out that he was like the special effects guy for the labyrinth. I'm like, what do you care about me? 
you're freaking rad. And he had all like this prototype stuff from the labyrinth around his house. And he was like, I have a gift for you. <gasps> and I'm like, what could he possibly have? And he hands me this VHS with this, you know, like typed up white freaking thing slipped in it that he bought in China on the black fucking market. It's the fucking original. Really? Yes. But, but I gave, I ended up giving it to my mom and during her questionable year, she lost it. No. no. Well, maybe you could still find, find it, it on YouTube I now. It's out there somewhere. I did have on my hands on it. Now, if you looked on YouTube, I'll bet it's out there. Yeah. That's you know, too much. It, it, it is out there. It was found in China years ago. If yeah. I was the director of of the massacre, Taint Hole Massacre 3, I'd put that thing out the way yeah. I wanted to, put it on DVD yeah. and Blu-ray. Absolutely. Yes. That's, that's, that's the crazy thing about both like Friday the 13th that I did and the Texas Chainsaw thing that I did. That there was so much political baggage attached to it, you guys. The guys in the suits were so up our asses. Neither yeah. one of the directors got to deliver the movie that they actually filmed and produced. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show a couple of these videos or my two movies are out. Beverly's in The Searching. Yay. Jennifer Banco's in The Searching and In the Shadows. So we'll just take a little break. We'll throw these on air and you guys go. Right. No. Yeah, I know. He's right here. I got my foot on my dog right now. <laughs> okay. right. Here we go. This is The Searching. <laughs> of Sasquatch sightings all over the Appalachians these past few days. Authorities recommend that you take proper precautions. Be careful out there. This is where the sighting occurred. Well, that's what they said. Hatcher hasn't spoken in 35 years. That's what you're telling me? That's exactly what I'm telling you. I find that hard to believe, Doctor. He just sits in front of the window, staring out at nothing. Past the hills, past the trees, past the days and nights, to this moment. What's going on? Your wife's been murdered. What? How? I think I can answer that question for you, Tom. Dr. Lucas, what are you doing here? Harlan has escaped. Grandpa, where are you? Here's something. Hello? Are you there? 
Now I'm going to have nightmares about two new people. (laughs) (laughs) I have to like go like this watching the trailer. (laughs) I tell you what, those two young girls in that movie there, uh, my gosh, they were just thrilled. They were really good. They're they're your generation from back then. I mean, they're they're really that good. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Looks great. Anyway, yes, they're on Amazon Prime right now. The search. Um, we and then we get the next one going. Yay. Yes. Sacred Grounds. Right there behind me. Sacred Grounds. Yeah. It's a Western it, Bigfoot. Yeah. I liked ours. I liked it when ours was called Sacred Grounds, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, we, we had that conversation in our meeting, remember? We, we yeah. wanted to have, well, Bob came up with the idea of having the Texas original Chainsaw Massacre and the Indian voice telling the story. And yeah. then I was like, that is a great idea. And then I said, well, what if we go ahead and bring that to life. And then we start putting that together, Beverly. We're going to shoot it out in LA there. Yeah. That's okay, but everything happens for a reason. So we'll we'll pick right back up. Western version is going to be so great. I can't wait. Yes. And then I've got the uh, cemeteries, which is up there by the live timer right there. Uh, That got picked up by Lionsgate. So and my producers one is matt matthew berry he's the hollywood casting director he did the rush hour movies con air the notebook great and then his partner and they got a business and his name's ron wells and i wrote my first draft and he got it and he was like he liked it enough to say wow can i try something with this and he came back wow it blew me away so that's awesome. can't wait yeah, and Beverly has the first draft of Sacred Grounds, but uh, I'm almost finished with the second draft, and uh, I think you'll be surprised about it. So, yeah. and then of course you, you, you other young ladies there, well, we got to get it over to you too. So, yeah, yeah, I keep us all seeing like two loves three sisters. That would that wouldn't that be great? Oh, I'd love that. Oh. that would be really fun. Yeah. So what uh, future projects do you, other than, I know Beverly has some with me, you guys, do you have any other ones, Beverly, future things going on or, or even the present? I'm just supposed to do a couple of conventions, but we'll see how that goes. Right now I'm a little overwhelmed with my my personal world. And um, so we'll see, but nothing nothing else other than that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just working, yeah, just working on the estate stuff. That's gonna be so sorry. Oh, Beverly, I was so sorry to hear that your grandma. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, 103. Well, almost 103. 103. Wow. Um, But just to, yeah, the estate, nobody understands how much estate work there is. It's like, that's what, you know, (laughs) I told you all all this back here is it's just like photo albums and furniture and, and, oh, my husband, my poor husband, he's, you know, and my grandma had a big house that was very tidy, neat and tidy, but it was big and there's, you know, lots of stuff. And, oh, did you learn God. anything? Did you learn anything new about her that you didn't know, like going through her stuff yeah. or reading letters I, or? I got to, um, yeah, a lot of stuff. It's like the old pictures alone just give you so many clues to her life and how she grew up. She was she was an orphan, and um, the pictures of her, her, her both of her parents died when she was very very young. And so did, I, got, I finally got to see a picture of her parents, which she'd never shown us before, which I found way back. So all kinds of stuff like that, Jen. It was just crazy. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Do you have anything, any movies out that people don't know about that are getting ready to come out? You know, any information on that? Me? I know you told me. Uh, yeah, Beverly. You told me oh, you were doing a movie and you was oh, there for a day. The Slashers, I did. That should be there coming out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Slasher Nurse. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. I flew in now, one were day. You the Sorry? Were you the slasher? No, psychiatrist. Psych- okay. but, yeah, but I was excited that Same I, thing. I, I, I guess I can't say too much, but I was excited at how my part ends. <laughs> oh, wow. It was fun. Yeah, I'm glad. I was hoping for what, yeah, it was a little different than what that was in the script, but I still I was really excited about it. So never got to have, have anything. That. Anything from present to future stuff going on? Um, I have a film on Amazon called Confession that came out last year, and it's really good. It's like a twisty uh, sort of female take on a date rape and 
whatever. I played a DA, and anyway, it's it's actually a really good movie. Um, and then I have a film coming out called Lucky Louie on March first. That'll be on Amazon. And uh, and then I wait, wait a second there. Wait, wasn't the one with O.J. Simpson? Her name was Marcia as well. Yes. Yeah, you said your name. You, you was the, the prosecutor, right? District attorney. Yeah, different Marcia, but yeah. No, oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's she just might have spelled it with a C I A though. No, I think she spelled it with an S H as well. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, good. I just want to throw that out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, and then I have I another film. I don't know when it's coming out called The Hail Mary. I do these films with Dan Roebuck, who's like a big. He's done a ton of horror films. He works with Rob Zombie all the time, and he played um, Grandpa Munster in the Rob Zombie Munster film last year. And Dan and I, I've known him since I was 19 years old. We've been like best friends. So I have, I literally have done one, two, three, four, five films with him. I'm currently filming a Christmas movie with him. Oh, wow. Yeah, we did all the exteriors. He's from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is like the most beautiful city to shoot at Christmas time. It's like the perfect Christmas city. So we filmed all the exteriors at the end of November, and now we're going back and filming the interiors in March. So. Wow. That should be fun. It's called Saint Nick of Bethlehem, and it's looking great. It's my that's my dream. Like I love those cheesy Christmas movies. This one's actually really good. <laughs> you know, so so I was just like a, a kid in a candy store filming it. <laughs> Is that going to be on Amazon too? Amazon? I I don't know where it's going to be. Uh, hopefully next Christmas it'll be on all of it. But Lucky Louie's going to be on Amazon. Um, and the and streaming streaming. I think you have to rent it. And then the Hail Mary, I'm not sure when that's coming out, but that's kind of a special film to us. So I play a nun. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> not only a nun, the mother superior. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. But I loved her. So that's hopefully, I'm not sure. It's about, He's. it's almost finished. We filmed it like two summers ago and it's looking really great. So I'm excited. That's so great. Yeah. And then we did, I did a film with him called Tuesday's Flu that he directed and is in that starred Ross, Ross Mark <coughs> on Walking Dead, who was great. And John Grice, who's in The White Lotus. And it, oh, that wow. was, and Jackie Earl Haley, who I had done a film called Little Children with oh, wow. years ago. And Jackie's in it. And the, That's it, Kelly it Leak. was looking great. Yeah. Excellent. That's Kelly Leak. Yeah. Yeah. They're from Bradley yeah, did Danny you play played, uh, the new Freddy. Played the pedophile in Little Children. I oh, can wow. it. It's a great movie. He is, I think he was nominated, maybe won an Oscar for it, but he was nominated for an Oscar for it. He was, he's incredible in it. Oh, he's a good actor. I like him on one of my movies. Actor. Yeah. Nice guy, too. Yeah, he seems like it. Yeah, well. <laughs> Yay. Thank God for Dan Roebuck. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Right. How about you, Jen? Other than convention stuff coming up this year and something that I'm working on secretly, nothing to really write home about right now. Good. How about life? How about life, guys? How's everybody's yeah. life? Good. Good. Life's good. Life busy. Yeah. I think we're so busy this year that we're we're going to beg for time off. Yeah, I hope so. I'm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready for a change right now. I'm a little over, I, I'm ready for this to all, all of yes. this stuff for, to be, I've got to put my grandma's house on the market soon and I just want that to be done. And so, yeah, it's a little wow. crazy. It's yeah, I remember you, you told me that you were trying to sell somebody's house and how that ever turned out. That was my house. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I sold Marsha's house. Yes, I sold my house. <laughs> down in LA. Oh my gosh, that was it was beautiful. And I, I know she's bummed about selling it, but it's okay. We they didn't it. use it. They didn't you use buy it. another one. And then I was the last thing. I think what you're talking about is my brother-in-law's house in in Playa del Rey or Playa Ooh. Vista with the ocean view. Didn't sell. It didn't sell. So, tell people right now. Tell them out there. Go out there and buy it. <laughs> How did that not sell? It just it, it we put on the market when the strike happened, mm -hmm. and the market and the interest rates went way high. Just no at the same time when yours was just just so we finished selling yours. We got in just in time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, it was, yeah, that was just oh my gosh, and so that um, he was amazing. Just got to thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Well, it was a beautiful place to sell. Oh my mm. gosh, it just showed so well. It was just, it's phenomenal. It's like, I'm sad to not be going down there and showing it anymore. <laughs> it was just a pleasure to go down there every time. Just like That's our little lovely. oasis in LA, yeah. Yeah, it was a, oh my gosh, great place. And then, well now, so we pulled my brother-in-law's place off the market. He wants to do some fixing up to it, which I'm not a, I'm not for. I said, don't, I don't want you to put money into it, but what yeah. you know, your call. It's his home. And then now I've got to do my grandmother's probably in the next couple of weeks. And that's going to be a big ordeal because she's got a big house in Beverly Hills and it's nice. a thing. So uh, it's good. It's good though. Let's get that behind me, get it all behind me and I'll be in a good place. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, while we're still here, but, um, now next week, uh, I was supposed to have Laura Park Lincoln on this week, but she could, she had to work tonight. She had to work last Thursday. So, and I know Jennifer had to work Thursday, so I'm going to have her on next Monday right. um, on here. So if anybody knows who Laura Park Lincoln is, she is the older half of Jennifer Banco's character, Tina. So, oh, she yeah. is? Oh, that's yeah. so cool. Right, 13th New Blood. So she's Marcia, next week. Did, you, did Marcia ever play a Tina? We've got lots of Tinas. I've played a Tina here. I have never played a Tina. Oh, Honestly. Wow. I've never played a Tina. Tina. Okay, well, your, your, role, your role in Sacred Grounds will be Tina. <laughs> Mine? Yes. Is that yeah, okay? I'm there. Yeah. I'm going to be Tina. Yeah. <laughs> and, and work with that accent because it's Did back in the <laughs> it's, it's 1800 Southeast Ohio. So oh, get that accent. Well, you know I'm from Ohio, Glenn. Do you I remember? Springfield, yeah. Yes, I am. I'm going to get you one of those secret holders. Hey, yeah. Sacred holders. I don't know if that's appropriate for that time, but we'll have to see. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah, it. So, so the audience out there will have another Scream Queen next week, Laura Park Lincoln. Wonderful. I'll be posting it on my page and on uh, nightmark.com there. Not nightmarkfilms.com, excuse me. Um, but uh, anybody ever has any messages to leave me, just go ahead and send it to that email. Thank you for having us. Yes. Yes. Thanks for having us, Glenn. We're gonna yeah, bring you back. Nice to meet you, Jen. Nice to meet you, Miss Marcia. <laughs> <laughs> Our lovies. I, I'm glad you. Yeah, you're meeting here. I hope you meet. Soon I know. I like that. Yeah. And Beverly, yeah. I'll okay. see you soon. I can't hey, wait. Hey, you guys, uh, you guys all want to come back one again sometime? Mm -hmm. Are you all in to come back in sometime? Sure, of course. Okay. Well, I know Jen. Look at Beverly. She's just like, yes, Glenn. Yes, Glenn. <laughs> I'm happy to anytime. If people right, well, hey, guys, <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. thanks I so love you guys. Bye. 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 All right, guys.